50-something millions of years ago, on land, dinosaurs still reign supreme. However, at sea, a titanic struggle for supremacy is unfolding between the vast and varying animal species. You are one of four major aquatic-based animal classes, reptile, fishes, cephalopod, or crustacean, and you need to help your species survive and thrive better than the rest in Dominant Species Marine, which was designed by Chad Jensen and published by GMT Games, who sponsored this video. Hi everyone, my name is Candace Harris from Board Game Geek. I've got some aquatic species to dominate, so let's get down to the table to learn how to play Dominant Species Marine. Dominant Species Marine is a survival of the fittest worker placement area influence game for two to four players, which abstractly recreates a small portion of ancient history, the ending of an onerous ice age and the resulting impacts for the living creatures struggling to adapt to the slow changing earth. Each player represents one of four major aquatic based animal classes, duking it out in the deep sea. Throughout the game, you'll take actions to help your species adapt grow, migrate, evolve, and thrive in as many different habitats as possible to earn victory points for your animal before an asteroid crashes into the earth and ends the game. The player who accumulates the most victory points will have their animal crowned the dominant species. But before we start migrating our species, let's go over the setup for Dominant Species Marine. Before your first game, you'll need to apply two identical stickers to the top and bottom of each white wooden cylinder so they look like this. To begin setup, place a game board in the center of the table. Then place five land tiles, five ocean tiles, and one of each of the other five large terrain tile types onto the indicated spaces on the game board. Flip the remaining 21 large terrain tiles face down, shuffle them, and create three stacks of seven tiles each. Then place these stacks on the three wonderless tile spaces on the board and turn the top tile of each stack face up. Place a small vent tile smoker side up on top of the bottommost ocean tile. Then place another vent tile geyser side up on top of the topmost land tile. Place the remaining 10 vent tiles in a stack on the vent tile section of the board. Next, place one of each of the six types of element discs around the center central reef tile as indicated on the board. They should slightly overlap each of the tiles that meet at the corresponding intersection. Place the rest of the element discs into the black cloth bag. There are some copies of Dominant Species Marine that came with a white bag instead of a black bag, so whenever I mention a black bag, it might be a white bag for you. Then randomly draw elements from the bag to place on the jellyfish circles under the action display, starting with four in the abundance section, followed by another four in adaptation, four in speciation, and finally four more elements in the wanderlust section. Place the 16 square terrain markers into the red cloth bag, randomly draw three from the bag, and place them into the three starfish squares next to the competition action. Then draw five more terrain markers and place them into the squares next to the evolution action, arranging them in left to right order by type as indicated underneath the spaces. Next, have players choose the animal they would like to play and give each player the corresponding animal display. Use the side showing three pre-printed elements in the upper left. The other side is for a gameplay variant. Each player should take a number of wooden cylinders matching their animal's colors. Four in a four player game, five in a three player game, or seven in a two player game. Put the remaining cylinders back in the box since they will not be used. Place the six square markers with white cylinder icons into their matching spaces near the bottom left of the board. Place the six special pawns on top of their matching markers. Place the six smaller square markers showing element icons on the one space of the victory point track. Place each animal's VP marker on the zero space of the victory point track with the plus 100 side down. Next, each player places the 35 species cubes matching their animal's color into the gene pool area of their animal display. Then, each player takes one cube from their gene pool and places it into the left box matching their animal on the food chain to use as a reseed marker. And each player places three cubes from their gene pool onto the central reef tile. Next, shuffle the 18 trait cards together to form a face-down deck. 
Deal three cards to each player, then put the rest in the box without revealing them. Each player looks at their own cards, secretly selects one to keep, then puts the remaining two back in the box. Once all players have selected a trait card, each player reveals their chosen trait simultaneously, placing it face up on the allotted space on their animal display. Remove the asteroid card from the deck of evolution cards and shuffle the remaining 34 evolution cards face down. Remove 10 of them and put them back in the box without revealing them. Then take four cards, shuffle the asteroid card with them, then place this stack of five cards face down next to the game board. Place the remaining 20 evolution cards face down on top to form a draw pile. Then draw the top five cards of the evolution draw deck and place them face up into the five slots of the evolution card section of the board. Finally, place the survival card to the side of the board. Now you're ready to start dominating the deep sea. Dominant Species Marine is played over a series of turns in which each animal or player takes one action in reverse food chain order, starting with the crustaceans, followed by the fishes, cephalopods, and lastly the reptiles. On your turn, you'll place exactly one of your pawns on a fossil action space within the action display and immediately perform the corresponding action. Or you can retrieve all of your pawns from the board instead of placing one. Each player begins the game with a number of basic pawns, but during the game, you may also gain control of special pawns. A basic pawn can only be placed in an empty, non-special action space that's after all of your previously placed pawns, meaning a section of the action display that's below all of your placed pawns or to the right of your pawn that is lowest on the action display within the same section. However, Special pawns can be placed on any empty action space, a special action space, or even a space that contains an opposing animal's basic pawn. And when that happens, give the bumped basic pawn back to its owner. Play continues from turn to turn in this fashion until the game ends and final scoring occurs. Now let's dive into how the different actions work. When you choose the abundance action, take one of the elements currently present in this section and place it on a vacant corner of any tile on Earth. Elements can be placed on any vacant corner of a tile, even a corner shared by only one or zero tiles. When you choose the autotrophs action, you either remove one element from a vent tile matching an element type currently in the autotrophs box, or you swap places between one element currently in the autotrophs box and any one element currently on a vent tile. In either case, the vent tile you choose must match the type pictured next to the associated action space, either a smoker vent or a geyser vent. The autotrophs box is empty at the start of the game, so nothing happens with this action until the autotrophs box is populated from a reseed event, which I'll explain later. Similarly, the depletion action has no effect until after the second reseed event of the game. But if there are elements in the depletion box, you can perform the depletion action to remove one element from Earth that matches an element type in the depletion box and place it back in the draw bag. To perform the adaptation action, take one of the elements currently present in the adaptation section and place it on an empty element space on your animal display. No animal may ever have more than six elements on its animal display, including the pre-printed defaults and added elements. So if your animal has no vacant gray spaces, this action is forfeited. Animals are allowed to have multiple element discs of the same element type. Adaptation also has a special action space, which you can tell by this white pawn icon. The special action gives you the option of having the new element replace one of your animal's existing element discs. If you do, put the replaced element back into the black bag. To perform the regression action, place a cube from your gene pool into a vacant square to the left of the action spaces. Having a cube in regression protects your elements from removal during reseed events, which again I'll explain later in the video. To perform the speciation action, Choose any one element on Earth that matches the element type associated with the action space you placed your pawn on. Then, place new species cubes from your gene pool onto any number of adjacent tiles based on the values indicated on the speciation action. You can place up to four species if the tile is ocean, up to three species if the tile is sand or seamount, up to two species if the tile is reef, seagrass, or kelp, or up to one species if the tile is land or vent. 
Since you're choosing one element on Earth and placing species cubes on the tiles adjacent to it, only one, two, or three tiles can be populated at a time. The special action space allows speciation around an element of your choice, and it doesn't need to be present next to any of the other action spaces. When you choose the Wonderlist action, first you'll select a large tile from one of the three Wonderlist tile stacks. If there's a tile underneath the one you took, flip it face up. Then choose an empty blue hex on the game board that is adjacent to at least one existing terrain tile and place the new tile there. Next, you may select one available element in the Wonderlist section and place it on any vacant corner of the newly placed tile. Then gain bonus victory points according to the bonus points table based on the number of same type tiles that are or are adjacent to the newly placed tile. In other words, Count the tile you just placed as well as every adjacent tile to it that matches the terrain type. Finally, in food chain order, every player may move all, some, or none of their species that are currently adjacent to the newly placed tile onto that tile. The special action space here lets you take another turn. To perform the tectonics action, choose a non-vent tile on the edge of the hex grid and temporarily set aside all species from the chosen tile. Then place a new vent tile from the stack on top of the chosen tile. Vent tiles have two sides, one depicting a land-based geyser and the other a sea-based black smoker. Place the new vent tile smoker side up if it's placed on the bottom half of the board or geyser side up if it's placed on the top half. Then gain bonus victory points according to the bonus points table based on the number of vent tiles that are or are adjacent to the newly placed tile. Similar to the Wanderlist action, you simply count the tile that was just placed as well as every vent tile adjacent to it. From the species you set aside, place one belonging to each animal back on the tile and the remainder of the removed species are displaced back to their owner's gene pools. Finally, place one species from your gene pool or one of your eliminated species on the newly placed vent tile. When performing the tectonics action, if there are no vent tiles remaining, this entire action is forfeited. The special action space here allows you to choose any tile to place the new vent tile, meaning it doesn't need to be on the edge of the hex grid. The migration action is how you'll move your species around on the board. To perform a migration action, select a number of your species anywhere on Earth up to the amount shown on the action space where you placed your pawn, then move each chosen species onto an adjacent tile. Migrating species that begin the action on the same tile may move together onto the same tile or be split up onto separate tiles. If you place your pawn on this space, you can move up to five species, whereas if you place your pawn here, you can only move up to two species. The special action space here allows you to move any number of your species onto adjacent tiles. When you perform the competition action, choose any one tile on Earth that matches the terrain type associated with the space where you placed your pawn, and the tile you choose must contain at least one of your species. Then you eliminate up to one, two or three opposing species on the chosen tile depending on which space you placed your action pawn on. The eliminated species may belong to the same or different animals. When species are eliminated, they're placed back in the box out of play and they are not returned back to their owner's gene pools. The special action space allows you to choose up to two tiles, one after the other instead of just one for the competition action. And the tiles can be any terrain type regardless of the terrain types associated with the other three spaces. Also, you can choose the same tile twice in a row, and in that case, you would eliminate up to two opposing species there. The evolution action is a two-step process where you'll score a tile, then you'll possibly resolve an evolution card. First, choose exactly one tile on Earth that matches the terrain type associated with the space you placed your pawn on, and score it. The animal with the most species present gains the highest number of victory points as listed on the tile scoring table for the corresponding terrain type. And depending on the type of terrain, animals with the second, third, or fourth most species on the tile may also gain victory points as indicated on the tile scoring table. For example, if you're scoring a vent tile, only the animal with the most species scores one point and no other animals would score points. Alternatively, if you're scoring a land tile, all four animals will score points if they're on the tile being scored. 
In any case, ties for scoring species on a tile are broken in descending food chain order. Reptiles first, then cephalopods, then fishes. For example, if you're scoring this coral reef tile, the cephalopods are tied with the crustaceans for most species. Since the cephalopods are higher on the food chain, they break the tie and would gain six points. Then the crustaceans would gain three points. And since there's not a third animal present, no further victory points would be awarded. But if there was a third animal present with less species, they would gain two points. After the tile has been scored, if you have at least one thriving species on that tile, meaning at least one element on the tile matches an element on your animal display, you must select and resolve one face-up card in the evolution card section of the board. When choosing an evolution card, you can only choose a card that occupies a numbered slot at or below the value associated with the space where you placed your pawn. So if you placed your pawn on the action space that shows a three, you would choose an evolution card from slot three or lower. When resolving an evolution card, you must resolve all of the card's effects in their entirety in the order they appear on the card. If this is impossible due to the current game state, resolve as much as possible and skip the rest. If you have any issues understanding the text on an evolution card, you can find clarifications of the evolution card effects on pages 18 through 20 in the rule book. After an evolution card is resolved, place it face up on the discard pile next to the board. Then refill the evolution cards area by sliding cards down as necessary, and then draw a new evolution card to place face up in slot number five and check to see if you triggered an extinction or survival event. If the card you just added to slot five has a dead fish icon, an extinction event is triggered. Or if it has a live fish icon, a survival event is triggered. If an extinction event is triggered, eliminate all endangered species, or species that exist on a tile with no elements matching its animal display. Remove them from Earth and place them back into the game box out of play. During a survival event, make sure the player who has the most species on vent tiles has possession of the survival card. If there's a tie for most species, no player receives the card. The player who has the survival card then scores victory points according to the bonus points table based on the total number of vent tiles that are occupied by their animal species. Before I explain how the domination action works, I need to explain the concept of dominance, which is pretty important considering the game is titled Dominant Species Marine. To determine your animal's domination value for a particular element type, you would count the number of that element on your animal display and then multiply that by the number of tiles on Earth that contain at least one of your species and at least one of that element. Then you would compare your domination value to the element's current target number on the victory point track. If your domination value exceeds the target number, you are considered to dominate that element. For example, the reptiles have six matching sun elements, two suns on their display, times three tiles on Earth with at least one sun and at least one reptile. The sun's current target number is four, and since the reptile's domination value of six exceeds that, the reptiles dominate the sun element. It is possible for multiple animals to dominate the same element at the same time. When you take the domination action, you'll choose exactly one of the six element types that your animal currently dominates. Then you'll take control of the special pawn associated with the chosen element. If the pawn is in front of another player or still in its setup location, take it and put it in front of you, making it available for future turns. However, if the pawn is on the action display, Leave it where it is and you'll get it on your next retrieve action. Then take that pawn's associated control marker from wherever it is and place it in front of you. Finally, move that pawn's associated target marker up the victory point track to the space that matches your domination value. I'll also point out that this domination action space is only available in three player games and this one is only available in four player games. Dominant Species Marine has a lot of actions, but the good news is each player's animal display nicely summarizes all of the actions for players to reference during the game. If you cannot or choose not to place an action pawn on your turn, you can take a retrieve action and return all of the pawns you control, basic pawns and special action pawns. 
Then, if it's not already there, slide your animal's cube on the food chain from the left box to the right box. At that point, if all food chain cubes are in their rightmost box, the round ends and a reseed event occurs immediately. But regardless if a reseed event is triggered or not, it's important to note that after you perform a retrieve action, you'll still continue to take your turn as normal. Sliding your food chain cube to the right is simply a reminder of who has already performed a retrieve action, which will eventually trigger a reseed event when all players have their food chain cube in the rightmost box. During a reseed event, you'll perform several steps to prepare for the next round. First, remove all elements from Earth that are surrounded by exactly three vent tiles. Then, perform the regression action. For each element type present in the regression box, every animal without a cube in the regression section must remove one element disk of the same type from its animal display. Then return all cubes in this section to their owner's gene pools and put all elements in the regression section back into the black bag. Next, slide all elements in the adaptation section down into the regression box then put all elements in the depletion, speciation, and wanderlust sections back into the black bag. Slide all elements in the autotrophs box down into the depletion box, then slide all elements in the abundance section down into the autotrophs box. Next, put all terrain markers in the competition and evolution sections back into the red bag. Then draw elements from the black bag and place them into the jellyfish spaces of the abundance, adaptation, speciation, and wanderlust sections. Next, draw terrain markers from the red bag to populate the starfish spaces of the competition and evolution sections. And then reset all cubes on the food chain to their leftmost boxes and play proceeds to the next animal's turn. The end of the game is triggered when the asteroid card is played during an evolution action. At that point, you continue playing up until the next reseed event would have been triggered. Then you'll perform one final extinction event followed by a final survival event and then in-game scoring. Each player scores points equal to the victory point value of the target markers associated with special pawns they control. Finally, you'll score each and every tile of Earth one last time according to the tile scoring table. Then, the player who controls the animal with the most victory points wins the game. If there's a tie for the highest, the tied animal highest on the food chain wins. And that's how you play Dominant Species Marine. But before you go, there are a few more things I'd like to mention. During setup, I mentioned each player chooses one of three trait cards to place on their animal display. Trait cards give each animal a unique special ability during the game. Whenever a trait card contradicts a rule, the trait card always takes precedence. You can find clarifications for trait cards on pages 20 and 21 of the rulebook. The rulebook also includes a few gameplay variant rules for longer or shorter games, different setups, and more, but I'll leave you to discover that on your own. Dominant Species Marine is a highly interactive, thematic, competitive game. It has a great deal of player interaction from the action pawn worker placement system, and players are constantly competing with each other to position their species best for the terrain tile area majority scoring. Plus, players all have a burning desire to dominate elements to gain those special pawns, which give you access to juicy special action spaces and more flexibility when it comes to choosing actions. Since there aren't traditional rounds, there's also an interesting timing element that comes into play as players retrieve their action pawns at different points in the game, opening up spaces and potentially triggering reseed events. It makes for a very exciting and engaging game. And if Dominant Species Marine seems like a game you'd enjoy, be sure to check out its page on Board Game Geek to learn more. I'm Candace Harris from Board Game Geek, and that is how you play Dominant Species Marine. Have a great day.